Hello, Peter Gertz. I'm a psychiatrist. Will I ever recover from childhood abuse or neglect? So you may be wondering, sometimes feeling really overwhelmed. You had a very difficult life when you were young. Your father beat your mother in front of the children. He beat you. He was an alcoholic. And now, and in general in your life, multiple boyfriends have beaten you. So you feel like you're going through a cycle again and again of trauma. And that can be overwhelming. So how to deal with that and how to transform that and can you recover? So one thing for all of us to try and realize is no one's better than you. We're all just people with problems. I have my problems, you have your problems, the next person has their problems. We're all just human beings with our own challenges and believe me, everyone has them. And I hear this all the time from patients and I see the consequences in the clinic. People may have PTSD, depression, anxiety, dissociation, alcohol, drug problems. And sometimes it feels to me like all these diagnostic names are euphemisms for people who've been traumatized. Not all of them maybe, but often it feels like these words we use for diagnoses are labels we put on people who've been traumatized. And again, no one's had a perfect life. I had my own challenges in childhood. So if there's been abuse and neglect, we want to accept that emotionally. We don't want to deny that. We don't want to try and push those things away. We want to embrace those facts that there's been abuse or neglect in our lives. We want to embrace those emotions, but we don't want to wallow in those experiences. We don't want to constantly rehash them. We just want to embrace the emotions without the internal dialogue, that voice commenting. We don't want that voice commenting. So you may feel you're a victim. You may be angry at the perpetrator or perpetrators, for instance, parents. You may feel depressed. You may ask yourself, why me? Why did this happen to me? My friend so-and-so, she's had a wonderful life. Why did this have to happen to me? So one thing to remind ourselves of, of course, is there's no justification for any abuse. However, it can really help if we live our lives as if we chose everything, including the abuse and including the perpetrators in our lives, because that way we can avoid feeling like a victim. What can also help in that context is seeing this whole world as a big school, a learning environment where we learn from each other and some of those things that we learn can be very, very difficult. And life is full of challenges. If we accept that, that can make life easier actually, make it less challenging. Once we accept that it's full of challenges, we can be sure, you know, after one challenge, there's gonna be another challenge. But again, if we accept that, that can make life easier. And we want to realize, and I do think this is true, that any challenge is also an opportunity. And we want to do our best to have gratitude for these challenges, opportunities, even the abusers we want to have gratitude for. And again, there's no justification for abuse, but if we can have gratitude, that can really help us. And the gratitude I think really is relevant in the sense that if you have gratitude for what you've been through, that means you can use what you've been through to help yourself and others. For instance, if you've been through abuse or neglect, you might become a, a psychotherapist or an artist even, express your what you've been through in art, or if the abuse has driven you into drugs or alcohol, you might become a drug counselor. 
So these things can really shift. What you've been through, even if it's been horrendous, can be flipped around and you can use that to help others. You can have insights that other people don't have because they have not been through these things. So if you've been through terrible things, traumatic things, you're gonna have some insights that most other people do not have. And you can use that to help other people. And in that sense, you can recover. So we're talking about liberation from a mindset that can lead to depression. And that liberation really can be transformative and even biologically. So if you change your mindset, that can change your biology and change your body epigenetically. So based on changes in your mindset, chemical, biological changes can happen in your body and that can change which parts of your DNA are red and which parts are not red. So that literally can change your physical being. Thank you.